So your roommate is a racist got that funk. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting situation to be in, isn't, isn't it? I used to live in England myself, and if I dare to generalize, uh, one of the things that surprises, surprised me the most when I got there was just how open everybody was about their racist attitudes, or at least the people that I knew. Uh, everyday racism seemed alive and well where I was. <clears throat> but it's interesting that... Canadians and Americans are used to being thought of as somewhat unsophisticated and naive when it comes to the real world, whereas Europe, with its checkered history, has pretty much seen it all. It's um, interesting when you think that European racism may simply be a species of naivete, or I would even call it um, future shock, maybe. Um a, a Canadian and American fully expects their country to have a different ethnic makeup from one generation to the next. Um, and uh, it doesn't particularly shock us when a neighborhood suddenly, or, you know, it looks sudden, but say over a period of 10 or 20 years, changes its ethnic makeup completely. That's just the way it goes here. <clears throat> um, but Europeans are not used to this. This is all completely new to them. The, the Europeans, all, all the countries of Europe, they have powerful ideas of nationality, which we simply don't have. Americans have a strong sense of national identity. Canada, not so much. Um, but an American sense of the national identity is of a never-ending work in progress. Canada is now, I think, in a dead heat with the United States over which country is going to have a white minority sooner. And Canada has the highest rate of immigration in the Western world, and that, that hasn't affected our immigration policies, policies at all. We just say that, well, it's, the economic benefits are obvious, they outweigh anything else, so we'll deal with it. <clears throat> the Europeans don't seem to be able to handle this yet. Um, you know, first of all, they're, you know, they're older countries than us with stronger sense of identity. Um, and secondly, they're a lot more crowded than most of our country, you know, than most of the parts of Canada and the U S are. So they don't really might, they may not have the actual room to stick a bunch of immigrants. Um, and finally, uh, this is new. <laughs> this is just, something that they've never dealt with before. Um, I know that there were waves of, say, Irish immigrants to the UK or in certain periods. Um, there were, you know, there were waves of Eastern European immigrants into France traditionally in the 1920s, uh, and Spaniards and Italians would immigrate to France. Um, <clears throat> but... A non-European immigration wave is something they simply have never come across before. Uh, it's just completely new to them. Um, <clears throat> and I think that they're simply reacting what, in, in the same way that anyone would react when it comes to something that's, you know, every, everything, that you, everything that you assumed about your country is now being changed. People are uneasy about that, and some people get nasty about it. I don't want to condescend, although I'm a pretty condescending kind of person, and advise Europeans to just be patient, uh, you know, and, and it will work itself out. It always does, um, you know, but I, it, it does kind of amaze me that, that I find myself as a Canadian feeling a little bit more worldwise, at least, than, an, than a, a European, um, because, again, we're we just... You go to Toronto, it's the, uh, in 1988, I think, it was labeled the world's most ethnically and culturally and linguistically diverse city. Now, that's saying something. That's more than New York, if you can imagine how diverse that would make <laughs> Toronto. But, so, big deal. Yes, it has problems. I understand that. And, you know, it's, I'm not trying to say it's a model of harmony or anything like that. <laughs> Neither is New York. But nobody worries about ethnic neighborhoods. Nobody worries about, you know, uh, the transformation of entire city blocks or neighborhoods. Uh, it's just, this is part of our national identity or part of our narrative, I suppose. It is not part of the European narrative. Um, 
So I think that when Europeans react badly, I tend to try to be a little bit tolerant. You know, you have to look at the whole person. Is this person, you know, just a bad person or is he, you know, he's just saying something nasty. And, you know, when you see the way he relates to people in the street, he's a different person. Uh, that to me was mostly what I what I encountered as European racism, and I've I've been to a lot of different parts of Europe and had conversations on this issue because it fascinates me. Uh, North African and Sub-Saharan African immigration to Europe is a fascinating subject. It's comparable to the, I, I would think the migration of Latin Americans to the United States. <clears throat> um, but again, we're used to that; they aren't. They will get used to it. And one thing that I will say, however racist a European might be, it's usually the passive kind. Usually it's just mutter, mutter, mutter. Um, hopefully the politicians sort this out and maybe I'll vote for a party that will restrict immigration or something like that. Um, I'm not poo-pooing the idea of uniformed thugs marching through the streets again. Uh, but I can't see it. Um, I tend to see it as more of an Archie Bunker response to, you know, this country isn't what it used to be when I was a kid. And uh, come on, we all feel like that, really. Um, but as I say, it is interesting to, to be in a position where you see a European, where you're, where you're a North American and you see a European as naive and um, inexperienced and reacting badly to something that really isn't that difficult to manage. Um, give it time. Um, the French have actually managed to create a narrative in which anyone can become French. Uh, not all French people subscribe to this, mind you. <laughs> uh, quite a few don't, actually. Um, but enough do. Uh, you can be black and French. You can be Asian-looking and French. You can be Arab and French. It's, uh, you know, that's proof positive that the Europeans aren't as inflexible as one might think. And that what we're seeing now is probably just an initial reaction to the first wave, noticeable wave of immigrants um, that, you know, will take people by surprise, will take people by shock and, and sort of upset their apple cart, I guess. But um, I know you, you'll be forbearing. Great video.